Hey everyone, Cynix here. Today I'm going to teach you all a magic trick. Some of you might have recently noticed I've been having a lot of fun with holographic or prismatic effects in clothing. Normally you might think that achieving this type of effect would require using reference because it's seemingly quite complex. Well, today I'm going to teach you how to take any basic form you've painted and completely change the surface of it into something holographic or metallic without having to do any extra painting. And it might be a bit rough because I created a lot of these techniques very recently, but I'll do my best to make it easy to follow. Unfortunately for some of you, this will require Photoshop or potentially another program with good gradient map features. Let's get into it. I've prepared a handful of quick speed paints for today, mostly of clothing, but let's instead start with this simple sphere. As I somewhat alluded to, everything in this video will be done with gradient maps in Photoshop. So to demonstrate gradient maps, I'm first going to make a cutout of just the sphere and place that on its own layer. Now you can go up to image and then adjustments and find the gradient map option. What a gradient map does is map colors to specific values. So that bar on the bottom will show you what colors are being mapped to what values, starting with the darkest values on the left and going all the way to white on the right. There are a bunch of boring default gradient maps built into Photoshop, but for our purposes, we need to make our own. So you can try making one similar to what I have here. Simply click the gradient bar in different spots and add your own colors. This one goes in a pretty wide spectrum of pastel colors from purples and magentas to orange, then yellow, then mint, then cyan, and eventually white. You can pause the video if you want it to be identical, but honestly, I made this without too much thinking, and I think anything roughly similar will probably be fine, if not better. If you accidentally add an extra color or anything, you can always click it and hit delete. Once you have a nice colorful spectrum, I recommend typing a name for it and hitting that new button to save it. Alright, so now that we have that out of the way, let's just start getting wild with it. Here is a quick painting of a character wearing a fancy white shirt. If you just want to mess around with this technique in the quickest way possible, you could always try it on a photo instead, but I just wanted to paint a couple quick little things. Anyway, we want to isolate the shirt onto its own layer, so I'm making a quick selection and erasing everything other than the shirt. We're going to want to keep this layer for convenience, so let's duplicate it anytime we want to try some new effects. First up, I'm just going to apply that same gradient map that we just made, and if you don't get a good mix of colors on yours, I recommend just adjusting the value levels of this shirt first before adding the gradient map. Your goal is to get that full spectrum on there. Anyway, this should be good. Now comes my favorite part, and definitely the part that seems to trip people out a bit. We're going to set this layer to luminosity. Remember how all colors have their own unique value range? Well, we can abuse this to do some fun stuff by adjusting the hues of this layer. As those hues all get cycled around, you'll notice our luminosity layer is really having a strong effect on how shiny or metallic the shirt can look. Instead of having to ever mess with complex painting stuff, we can just fiddle around with these hues until we create something that feels like it reflects the surrounding values of the environment. It's kind of crazy, we can go from a super matte finish to looking silky to looking metallic just by turning that dial and seeing what looks best. Honestly, seeing that effect never gets old. At this point, you're free to try a lot of things. You can make a copy of that colorful layer and try some different filters and layer options, but I'm going to actually show you a much more elaborate and controllable approach. To get a really good holographic look, we're going to approach the highlight areas and the shadow areas separately. First, let's try the highlights, so we can duplicate our basic untouched shirt layer and adjust the levels until the values are mainly just hitting the highlight areas. Now going back to the gradient maps, I've made a couple special gradient maps. I've condensed all of the colors from the last one down into just the center area, and everything outside of that just cuts off immediately into white. If we use this and then set the layer blending option to something like darken, it will just leave the colorful parts in the highlights. 
You can fine tune this by adjusting the hues or adjusting the lightness to control how subtle they are. This process is a bit of trial and error because the amount of value adjusting you can do beforehand can really change things a lot. I wasn't crazy about this specific one though, so let's move on to the shadows. This time it's going to be the opposite, so I'll be adjusting the values of the shirt to focus on value changes in this shadow area, and then just using another custom gradient map, except this one has black on both sides instead of white. Once that is applied, we can set this layer to lighten or screen, and this is where the effect really starts to shine. I'm going to adjust it to be a bit more subtle for now, maybe too subtle, but regardless, I'm going to do another pass at the highlights, since I wasn't really happy with that first one. Anyway, once all that is done, we do have another powerful tool at our disposal, and that is the eraser. If something feels weird in some parts, but great in other parts, just erase some of it. You can mix and match all of these layers and all of these effects by erasing some parts and keeping others, piecing together whatever you think looks great. Anyway, I think that was a fun little demonstration, so let's speed things up and try a couple more. Here is another speed paint, and this time we'll be focused on the skirt. So I tried to make sure that I painted a skirt with good subtle form and simple lighting, so it should work well. The better your simple, straightforward lighting is, the better this effect will work. So I can do the gradient map and luminosity trick to make the skirt more metallic, and I'm not sure if I need it for this one, but you know, whatever, we'll just try it out. I'll also just do the same effect with the gradient map in just the highlight area and the gradient map in just the shadow area. So basically it's just the exact same as the previous one, which is why we're not going to waste too much time here and just move on for now. Aside from clothing, you can of course do this technique on anything. Here is a quick example of me using the same technique to spice up an environment painting that I did with Med earlier in the week. And if I take one of my mech paintings from earlier in the year, I should be able to completely change the surface material. I could do the prismatic holographic thing, but I actually made another quick custom gradient map. So this one is meant to represent gold. If you look at it, it's just a bit random, and I was mainly just trying to make it up off the top of my head and create a gradient bar at the bottom that looks like a shiny golden ring with brighter areas and darker areas. You're welcome to replicate it though. My original values on this mech were a bit subtle, so I could either just adjust them before applying the gradient map, or just apply the gradient map on top of another gradient map. It might start to get grainy, but that can be potentially useful also. Anyway, I like to just make a few different versions with different levels and brightness, and then just erase out to decide which parts to match with what other parts. Even in a super quick demonstration like this, the end results can be super effective. I'll probably wind up using this technique a lot in the future. It's just stupidly easy and looks great. No more complex metal rendering, just render everything with basic boring lighting and simple non-reflective forms and then use gradient maps to do all the heavy lifting. You can do it everywhere or just on a couple panels or lines, but the fact is DLC skins are now fully unlocked. All right, let's do one last quick demo to put everything together. I have yet another quick character speed paint from Imagination. I tried doing the luminosity gradient map to make this skirt look metallic, but it wasn't looking quite right. So to fix that, I duplicated the layer and used a different version for the light area and a different version for the shadow area. Now it looks extra shiny like it's made out of tin foil. I'm going to be doing the same earlier technique for the holographic effects in the highlights and in the shadows, and the results are looking pretty good. So now that I'm happy enough with that, let's see how my gold gradient map will work out. It seems a little too yellowish at first, but with a minor hue adjustment, it looks kind of awesome. Honestly, that worked way better than even I was expecting. Let's try having some extra fun with it. I'm just going to combine the gold and holographic materials together. It should be a nice way to cap things off, just a nice mix of the two with some gold in the waist area and a line near the bottom. It honestly looks like something that would have been a massive headache to render, but now it's just a few clicks away. 
So I guess that's everything. I hope you enjoyed my magic trick and go forth with your newfound powers and conquer the world of art. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to share it with your other art friends and whatnot. And finally, of course, I have a big, huge extra thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys rock. See you, everyone.